Hey guys, it's Alex Burtson, the Manic Scholar, back again with another Michael chart. Uh, today we're doing Maynard James Keenan, who is the uh, vocalist of Tool and Pussifer, and has a lot of different projects, and he also makes wine on the side, and is a very creative individual. Um, he usually does vocals and music. Um, so, if you don't know what Michael Teachings is, it's a channel body of knowledge that talks about our soul types uh, that we maintain for our whole reincarnational cycle and talks about the lessons we learn throughout our reincarnational cycle as we're progressing um, throughout our cycle, as well as characteristics that we take on for each life. Um, and this is divided up in a chart that you can get channeled. Um, which does your essence, which stays the same for all your lives on Earth, and then overleaves, which is the characteristics for this life only. Um, so I'm going to get into the details of his essence and overleaves. Let's start with essence. Um, so this is the stuff that will be the same for his whole reincarnational cycle. He's always going to be a warrior. That's his role, which is a very grounded, solid uh, type. Uh, very earthy, can, is stereotypically masculine, um, but they're very um, focused on action, production, protection, things like that. Um, they get a lot done. They're very productive. Um, so that's his, his role. He has an essence twin that's an artisan and also a cadence position that's artisan. So when that happens, when there's two... When the essence twin and the cadence position are the same role, um, they call, consider that an honorary member of that uh, role. So, so he's considered an honorary artisan. He's a warrior, but also an honorary artisan. Uh, so that you can see that a lot. You know, artisan is very creative, um, likes bringing new ideas and new approaches to things, uh, builds culture. Um, wants to express themselves uh, uniquely and have be very original. Um, so those are themes there. He also has a cadence and greater cadence that are both king. So that, that brings the dimension of the action axis stuff even more strongly to complement the warrior role that he has. Um, but this is focused more on you know leadership and authority um, with the king there. Um, so that's like the main aspects of his essence. He has a task companion that's also an artisan, so that uh, emphasizes the creativity focus a little bit more. His orientation is energy, or it's also known as beauty, but it deals with the physical dimension of things, the vitality and energy of our bodies, and that kind of domain of things. So the vitality and energy of our bodies is the domain that he's focused on. Uh, over um, the intellect or the emotions. So that's an interesting thing to see there. Um, I don't see that one as often as love or truth. Um, so that's interesting. Um, his male-female energy balance, he's got 97% male and 3% female. So he's that's a super high male energy uh, focus. Uh, so he... He's going to be very productive, get a lot done, um, very focused on action, production. Um, goes single-pointed focus and goes in towards goals. Uh, it's kind of the, the energies there from male energy. Female energy is more about being, but he's more on the doing side for sure uh, at 97%. So... That's interesting to see. His frequency is 46, which is right in the middle, which is really average. Uh, it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It just means that he goes through things at a steady pace. Um, so that's his frequency. His previous cycles is 12, um, which is a lot. Um, most of the ones I see are 10, but the average on the planet is 4. And what previous cycles means is it's how many planets you've lived on and gone through your whole reincarnation cycle on. So he's been on 12 planets before he came to Earth. Um, and he completed the whole uh, 
soul age process along with having a different role for each of those cycles so he was a different role in previous cycles on different planets but for this uh cycle on earth he's a warrior with honorary artisan and some king um so yeah that's it's pretty advanced um i just did a video of alan moore and he was 14 so that was even even more experience under his belt for alan moore um but 12 is a lot in general so for his global job and community responsibility his his global job is precipitation or initiation which is about kind of uncovering new ideas and disseminating the information and to everybody else initiating things with these new ideas but it's a lot about communication and creating new things um so it has a mix of artisan and sage roles there uh which are both on the expression axis so that's going to be a really big thing expression um interpretation deals with uh having social skills and communication skills to to uh solve issues between other people between different people um but it's a mix of sage and priest so it's got some spiritual element there along with the sage which is focused on communication so overall and you can see it for his global job and community responsibility it's artisan sage and priest so there's creativity there there's communication and there's the higher focus on the higher good um so those are kind of the themes of his global job there so that's his essence that's everything that's going to be um the same for his whole cycle he's always going to have this set up but the overleaves are what um he chose for this life only so i'll talk about that now his overleaves um he's in the baby soul age level seven so if you look at the timeline here um he's at the end of baby soul age which is focused on structure that's about fitting into society and following rules and getting along with everybody else um but it's when you're you're finally part of bigger society instead of like small tribe tribal settings like you probably were in the infant soul age uh, infant soul age is focused on survival, um, which is just to focus on the bare essentials of life. But he's already been in society for quite a while, uh, as he's been through all levels of the of the baby soul age. So once he completes level seven, he's going to go into the young soul age, which is focused on uh, outer success in the world, being as successful as you possibly can be. Um, so that'll be a theme coming up for him for the next several lives. Um, to complete this whole soul age uh, reincarnational process, it takes on average 100 to 200 lives to get through all five of these before you go to the last two soul ages and uh, go to the higher planes of existence And once you're done with the reincarnational cycle. So yeah, he has, he has three more soul ages to go through before he's done. So he's a little bit earlier in his cycle, but with uh, 12 previous cycles, he's has a lot of experience, more than a lot of people in general at this point. Um, so that's his soul age. His goal is discrimination, which is about making better choices uh, by saying no to things, letting things out of your life. It could be people or certain situations, um, but it's about building better discrimination and making better choices. Um, so that's kind of the theme for this life. Um, his attitude is idealist, but it's sliding to skeptic. So these are both on the expression axis, both of these uh, idealist and skeptic. Idealist is focusing on the ideal world that we could live in and works hard to try to achieve that world, like to bring that to fruition. But skeptic is the one that kind of doubts things and questions things and wants to get to the, the root of things to really know what's true. So he's got both of those going on. He also has caution mode, which is sliding to power, both on the expression axis as well. Um, caution is being very uh, deliberate with your actions and, and making sure you don't make any mistakes uh, as you take action and do things. Uh, so you're just very cautious. Uh, but power is the opposite where you you really express your energy strongly um, with authority. Um, and it's on, since it's only expression axis, it's, it's a big, there's a big theme of communication there. 
with power. So he's got everything in goal, attitude, mode is on the expression axis. So expression is going to be really big for him in this life, particularly, even though you know he's already an artisan, honorary artisan. So expression in general is going to be a big theme. His centering, he's got physical, emotional. So he basically filters his experience through his what he feels in his body primarily, gut feelings sensations, uh, however the, the physical body feels um, is what he's attuned to primarily. And whatever he feels in his body informs his emotional state, because emotional is second. So that's kind of the, the main centers that he's in. He's got the obstacle of arrogance, which is the fear of being judged. Um, so with arrogance, you might puff yourself up or try to uh, be, be bigger so that you, you can't be judged. Um, but it can also bring some shyness um, in certain cases. Um, his obstacle of stubbornness is a fear of change. So you don't want situations to change because it might uh, make you uncomfortable. You're not used to them or they might be seen as dangerous or something. Um, so it's, you, people with stubbornness usually like to stay the same in, the, in certain respects. Um, and not be op open to change. So those are kind of themes to overcome the the fear of being judged and the fear of change. Um, so now I'll talk about his body types. He's jovial and lunar. I was just looking at um, uh, Joe Rogan's body types, and the, it's the same, jovial and lunar. Jovial, the archetype for that is the emperor. It's aligned with the planet Jupiter. And, and uh, body type lunar is... Uh, the archetype is the genius, uh, which is more focused on the inner world, the emotional side, but is also very intellectual. So those are the, some things there that add to his personality uh, with those two body types. His quadrant is support. So when he's in a group set setting, he wants to be the one who's supporting everybody else. Um, he's not the one taking power, and he's not the one providing knowledge. So he, he's, the, he's someone that can help support other people on a project or so. So it's interesting because that's kind of what he does as his, in his role in, in the band tool. Um, the rest of the band writes the, the instrumental part. And then he comes in to support with his, uh, his vocal delivery. Um, so that's the kind of the role he, he probably plays in tool is more of the support role and not necessarily the main, uh, driving force, uh, He's not in the power position. So that's interesting. He's got the needs of adventure, security, and freedom. And um, that's everything in his overleaves. So what we can see overall is he's got lots of action axis stuff with the warrior and king here. But he also has some expression axis stuff that are, is really big. Uh, because he's an honorary artisan, uh, creativity is going to be really big. Originality is going to be really big creative expression. Um, he's got artist and sage and priest as his global job and community responsibility energies. So there's more communication in there and the expression as well as focus on the higher things. Um, but his goal, attitude, and mode are all on the expression axis. So expression is going to be a big theme for him, uh, which makes sense for what he does as a vocalist. Um, so yeah, that's basically his chart. Um, I'll have more charts coming soon. Um, so please tune in to, to see what else I got going on. I've got a good backlog of a bunch of charts to do, uh, to share. So I'll, I'll be working on that. So thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Manny Scholar out.